Hello, my friends. Please listen to this true story and this reality check. I assure you, it will, it will blow your mind. I assure you. So Abigail finally quit her marriage after five years of toxicity, abuse, oppression, suspicion, embarrassment, sadness, and deep regret. It was an accidental marriage, if you permit me to call it that. Abigail was 29, working with a top-range advertising agency somewhere in Lagos, and Toby was her client. Toby was an assistant brand manager at a beverage company, and Abigail was his agency contact person. Yeah, they worked at both ends. He was with the client, she was with the agency. So it was the end of the year party at the agency. Toby was invited from the client side by the agency. The party had become intense that late Friday night. They both had a little too much to drink. Abigail consequently followed Toby home to his crib that night, to his house. Uh, they got intimate and they both woke up the next morning regretting their actions. Hmm. To cut a long story short, about a month later, Abigail discovered she had taken in. She had become pregnant. Toby insisted she removed it. Abby says, no. She said she is 29 years old, have had two previous abortions for her former boyfriend she thought would marry her, and she's not ready to abort a third baby. Not at age 29. Mm. Anyways, the situation was getting somewhere, I mean, near awkward. I mean, it, becomes, it was becoming quite awkward for everybody. And at age 30, Toby was compelled to marry Abigail, 29. They both agreed to compromise. The marriage from the get-go was a disaster based on Abigail's relationship history and how cheaply he got her pregnant. Toby didn't trust her one bit. Toby was extremely suspicious of her, didn't trust her with any man, was always going through her phones, would embarrass her should she be with anybody that he finds to be a stranger, and the regular beating would follow. Hmm, things got worse when Toby lost his job and Abigail became the breadwinner. His insecurity worsened, every male counterpart was sleeping with her in his opinion, and her pain and frustration was greatly multiplied. The marriage, sadly, had to end in just five years. She chose to remain alive. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, a relationship mentality that strongly differentiates a man from a woman is the perspectives and interests they hold dear when choosing a life partner. I'll explain this, just go with me. Generally speaking, the man prioritizes a woman's past and the woman prioritizes the man's future. I'll say that again. The man will prioritize the woman's past and the woman will prioritize the man's future. Men generally consider and prioritize the past of whom they intend to marry and women generally prioritize the future of the man they intend to marry. To men generally, the value of a woman is measured by her relationship history the number of men she's been with, her body count, perhaps babies out of wedlock, and how famous or popular or common she is within the male community. To women generally, they prioritize the future of the man as far as provision, supplies, and security is concerned. Women generally are judged by the past and men generally are judged by the future. Many dysfunctional marriages today suffer from these internal pains and judgments the couples will rather, will rather not speak about or speak out on. So you'll see a situation where a man, for no apparent reason, is just mean to his wife, insensitive, promiscuous and selfish because he can't really handle the past of his wife, though he thought he could when he married her. Apparently he couldn't and he can't say it anymore. And many wives suddenly become mean, selfish, troublesome, and toxic because their husbands are failing to meet their expectations in provision, security, and resources. And the man is left confused. He doesn't know what he's doing wrong. Apparently, her female friends, her female colleagues, and perhaps her sisters seem to be having a better deal. So she is disappointed in her husband's inability to satisfy her expectations in resources, in provision, and pamper. This reality, however, she will hardly admit as well. Many failed marriages based on so-called irreconcilable, irreconcilable differences are traceable to these inner herds and judgments couples wouldn't admit to even themselves, much less outsiders. Listen, women don't really care about the man's history or his past. They don't care about their man's history. They don't care about the history of men, uh, his numerous past girlfriends or his body count. 
these don't count as long as he has the money to take care of them and uh, he's emotionally available. So for a woman, it's not the man's past. It doesn't matter. It's the future. Can he take care of me? Can he provide for me? Is he emotionally available? That's what matters to a woman, not the man's past. His body counts, don't count. And men don't really bother about a woman's inability to, uh, to earn so much and pay bills and all that as long as her relationship before he met her remains honorable, dignifying and respectable and responsible. He will look at her past and judge her by her past. Listen, my friends, don't be fooled by popular opinions or trends. Men still prefer and remain proud to marry virgins, no matter what they choose to say. And women still prefer to marry men that can pay their bills conveniently, no matter how much they earn on their own. And this is the truth. Babe, is it your messy history that is making him misbehave and he wouldn't admit? Oh, my guy. <laughs> Is it your inability to really take care of her that is vexing her and she wouldn't talk? So every day in a fight over nothing. My people, think these things. Painful realities couple can't openly admit. That's a problem. One is looking at the past, the other is looking at the future. And they can't admit it, so they're disqualifying each other on the account of this. Hmm. It is well. We all follow is my name. <laughs> Enjoy. Like, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell.